For our fifth wedding anniversary, my wife asked me to make a rustic headboard. This is how I made it. First, I went to my stack of pallets and broke them apart. There are plenty of videos out there showing you how to do this, so I didn't include this step in the video. After pulling all of the nails out, I laid all of the boards out to get a general idea of how much space I had to work with and if more boards would be needed. I trimmed down the edge on one side of each board and then set my fence to three and a half inches and trimmed the opposite side of each board to make them all the same width. Then I squared up each end. I skip sanded each board to knock off any dirt and splintery pieces. The pallet boards are going to be laid out and mounted on a sheet of half inch plywood. Initially, I was thinking since the pallet boards had varying depths, it would be neat to accent this even more by having some open spaces revealing the stained plywood below, but after laying everything out, I decided I liked the look of an all pallet wood headboard better. That being said, since this is made from a bunch of beat up pallet pieces, the stained plywood helped to hide any of the small gaps between the boards where the bare plywood would have been seen otherwise. So in the end, this step really wasn't all for nothing. I gave one side of each board a quick sloppy stain and then painted them with a mix of white paint and water. Once they dried, I gave each board another quick sanding to accent the distressed features of the pallet wood. As I mentioned before, since the boards were all cut to the same width but they all had varying depths, I figured it would work easier to stain, paint, and sand each board individually before assembly rather than trying to sand a giant uneven surface after assembly. I constructed the frame with 2x4s and pocket screws. For the top and bottom cross braces, I split a 2x4 in half. I had two additional cross braces at the bottom that were going to be used for mounting it to the wall by drilling through them into the studs, but later realized that this thing was pretty heavy, especially up top, so we ended up just using some L brackets along the top brace to secure it into the wall studs. I routed out a section at the base of the frame where it would contact the floor molding. This recess allowed the back of the frame to rest flush against the wall. I laid the plywood down on the frame, measured the distance from the edges of the frame to the edges of the plywood along the top and sides to make sure it was centered. Then I pre-drilled some holes with a countersink bit and screwed the plywood down. I repeated the process along the bottom and sides. Then the fun part began. We wanted the headboard to appear as though it was floating away from the wall. So to achieve this, the pallet boards were going to extend a couple of inches beyond the top and sides of the plywood, which would totally hide the frame that sat against the wall. The total width of the headboard was going to be 60 inches, so I actually made sure the pallet boards had an overhang that would allow the full width to be around 61 inches. This was done so later I could come back down with a circular saw to give each side a straight clean cut, bringing the width back down to 60 inches. It was very important to get these first top boards square so things didn't end up off and out of square the further we got down the headboard. Some glue and brad nails were the only things needed to keep the boards in place. As I worked my way down, I staggered the joints. For any that had a large overhang, I cut off the excess by first marking a straight line with a chalk line and then made the cuts with a circular saw. The cut off overhang pieces were used to fill in the remaining gaps and then after measuring again and marking with the chalk line, I cut the headboard to its final width of 60 inches. I gave it a couple coats of poly with a light sanding between each coat. At this point, I showed my wife the headboard and then she asked, what about the lights? Now, if you don't wanna add any extra lights to your headboard, you're done now and you can go ahead and install it. But if you do want some lights, check out this video here and I'll walk you through how I added some mason jar lighting to this headboard. If you like this video, leave a comment or give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Many more project videos just like this one will be coming out soon. Thanks.